So Susan, how did you wind up in your current position as Vice President of Corporate Development at Cisco? Uh, so clearly it's not a role that you can really ever prepare for. There's no uh, sort of master plan that gets you into such a, a unique job. Um, but uh, for me, my background was really in finance. I spent a lot of years working with businesses to uh, ensure that they're driving uh, optimized financial returns uh, and doing a lot of transformational work to get the business set to a strategy that was really going to maximize their growth. Uh, so when I transitioned into integration, it was really sort of a natural next step. Uh, again, I'm working with businesses to set their strategy, uh, bringing organizations together and pivoting them in an aligned direction, uh, and really helping, again, to maximize financial growth. So um, nothing prepares you for doing a deal every six weeks, uh, having 15 to 20 integration programs running at any one time. Uh, other than you know a lot of coffee and adrenaline, but um, it's definitely uh, an exciting part of my career path. So Cisco is known for making really bold acquisitions to penetrate key markets. Uh, they've done more than 170 deals. Uh, tell me a little bit about this strategy. Uh, yeah, so we have a really uh, amazing strategy and deal team. They work around the clock canvassing the market, making sure that we understand uh, how it's developing, working with our field and our customers to understand both their needs today as well as their needs in the future. Um, we use that to work with the business teams to set their strategy. Uh, and at the same time, we're working with our leadership team to make sure that we are ready uh, from a leadership standpoint, from a bandwidth standpoint, from a capability standpoint to execute uh, when we find a deal we want to move on. Uh, once that happens, we move with a lot of discipline, but very aggressively. It's definitely a competitive advantage for us that we can um, work uh, very well with target companies um, and really start, again, the strategy process with potential acquisitions, making sure we're aligned on our vision, how we think the market is going to evolve, uh, and really an agreement as to how we can, how we can win together. Um, once we do that, we obviously go into a lot of planning and, and move forward with execution, but we continue to stay really aligned with the leadership team um, because integration is never going to go perfectly. Uh, and so we really pride ourselves on being able to always course correct uh, as things come up and as market dynamics change, uh, we're sort of constantly um, ready to, to respond to that. Okay. And so that said, what, is, what in your view are some of uh, the company's more noteworthy deals? Obviously, SourceFire was a big one this year. Uh, what stands out to you? Yeah, so SourceFire was really a great acquisition for us. Uh, really reinforced for the market our commitment to being uh, their key security partner uh, for our customers. Um, they have not only tremendous technology, but really, really talented people uh, who have fit incredibly well into our broader security team. Uh, within six months we had launched joint products. Uh, we launched another uh, major set of products a couple months ago. Um, in addition, we have our entire field organization selling the full portfolio. Uh, so we're really seeing great results from that and uh, excited about the value that they've brought to Cisco. Um, in addition, we have a deal, Meraki, uh, which is a different kind of acquisition, uh, really about business model. And so they really focus on, you know, simple management and configuration of networks, initially focused on commercial customers, but have more and more become important to our enterprise customers for some of their specific use cases. Uh, and bringing just a whole different way of going to market uh, for Cisco that's really been uh, exciting to see. So those are the expected results. You want them to go well. And then sometimes you get unexpected results. So in this case, uh, Meraki has actually taken some of our source fire technology and built it into their security products, which was a benefit we didn't plan on and has really been an unexpected uh, synergy that came from the two deals actually coming together, which obviously wouldn't have happened outside of Cisco. And looking from a broader market perspective, we've seen a lot of big technology players announcing split-ups, uh, companies like HP and, and Symantec. You know, what's your take on all this and, and what are really the drivers there? Yeah, it's a really interesting time uh, with the number of split-ups that are being announced and I think a time where companies need to be really cautious. Um, there's clearly dis-synergies 
um, as well as distraction that comes from any split up. And uh, as tech companies, we're really here to innovate, to solve customer problems. Uh, and when you're distracted and trying to recover from dissynergies, that's really hard to do. Uh, so I think as you know, potential acquirers of, you know, of these assets that get um, broken up, I think it's really important that we are diligent in ensuring that the businesses are what we expect, uh, that they have the right talent, um, that it hasn't either left or been kept in another part of the business uh, to drive the business going forward, and that the financials really reflect the dissynergies um, that have come from the split up. Uh, so I would recommend both as someone doing it as well as someone considering acquiring those assets a really high bar uh, around uh, making that kind of move. Great. Thanks so much, Susan, for all your insight on Cisco's mergers and acquisition strategy.